Hey y'all, and welcome to the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. My name is Kay. This is my YouTube channel where I share all about my knitting and crafting adventures. Today is Wednesday, September 2nd. Happy September. To me, September is super exciting. It just feels like, okay, everything fall now. September is my birthday month, so... September is probably my favorite month. <laughs> um, but today I have quite a bit to share with you. Some super exciting things. One I'm just now realizing I forgot to write down. Um, so much to share with you. We have a giveaway winner to announce. We have a new giveaway to announce, a giveaway for this episode. Lots to chat about some super exciting news that I hinted at last week that I will fill you all in on if you have not already seen the Instagram announcement. So let's go ahead and get started. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as The Crazy Sock Lady. We do have a group for this podcast on Ravelry. If you just look right down below this video in the description box, you are going to find links to everywhere that you can find me, show notes for this episode with links to project pages and shops that I talk about. In the Ravelry group right now, we have the Stash Busters Cal going on. This is a year-long knit-along that I am co-hosting with Julie from Twin Stitches Designs podcast. It is basically just use your stash. You can find out all of the full details over in the chatter thread. We had the Summer Sock Camp for 2020 come to a close. I am very sad that it is over. It was so much fun to do, and I am already looking forward to and excited for Summer Sock Camp 2021. I hope that you guys are already excited about it as well. I have a ton of prizes for the Summer Sock Camp, which is super exciting. So I'm gonna be working on doing everything with those and contacting the winners over the next couple of weeks. I will announce on here when I have contacted everybody. The way that I've been doing winners for knit-alongs and stuff in the Ravelry group is just contacting the winner via Ravelry messages. So make sure that you um, are keeping up with those, you're checking those to see if you've won anything. I still have some people with the Rainbow Connection Sock Cal that have not contacted me back, that I contacted them that they won a prize and I have not heard back from them. So make sure you're keeping an eye out for those Ravelry messages. I, like I said, I will announce here when I've contacted all the winners for Summer Sock Camp and then, um, so you'll know that you definitely need to go check and see if you won a prize because there are so many exciting prizes. I've shown them all as they've came in. Now it's time for me to just go through and get everything. Some of them need to be grouped together into larger prizes and all of that and then draw all the winners. So I will be working on that on the next couple of weeks coming up here. And let's see, let's go ahead and announce the winner from last episode. So we are giving away this embroidery or cross stitch project bag. And she did open a shop, so I will link it down below. It is DM's Crafty Vortex. I'll put the link in the show notes down below. But she did open a shop for these, which is amazing because the quality is so good on these. So I will link that down below for you guys. But I went through before we began and did random number generator for the comments from last episode and picked the winner. And that winner is Wendy Blaney. So Wendy, congratulations on winning the project bag. If you would just get in touch with me at crazysockladypodcast at gmail.com, I'll need your shipping information and then I can get that sent out to you. All right, I have a new design to share with you, a finished object, and then a couple of works in progress. First, let's talk about the new design. So this came out yesterday, September 1st. And this is the Rainbow Connection Fingerless Mitts. You guys may remember the Rainbow Connection socks. And this is Fingerless Mitts using that same pattern up the front. Then the back is just stripes, just like the socks. So you have the back and plain stockinette with the stripes. My favorite. I look Okay, there's not gonna be a good way to show that. Maybe like that. I don't know, I love a thumb gusset. <laughs> I think they're so pretty, especially with those stripes. 
So this pattern is out now on Ravelry and Etsy. I will be sure to link it down below. There is a coupon code. You can get the pattern for 25% off if you use the code RAINBOW25. And that code is good until the end of day this coming Sunday, which I believe is September 6th. So I will have all of that information down there for you. This is a fingering weight pattern. I go through how I did this one in, in the pattern. Um, you know, how many pattern repeats I did to get this and all of that. For this, I just used fingering weight scraps that I had. I do not even recall what the yarns are. I recommend a solid or a tonal for color A. So for me, I used this gray. That was my color A. And then for color B on this one, I alternated two different mini skeins that I had, the purple and then the pink. I just alternated those up throughout. Did three repeats with each. Or I did three, that didn't come out right. I did three repeats and then alternated, three repeats alternated down the, the mitt. And I love how, if you just look right here on the side, you've got the stripes going one way and then right here on this section, bam, it's just like they go the other direction. A lot of fun. So out now, details below. Thank you so much to everybody who has already purchased this pattern. I really enjoyed that and they're perfect. I think it's the perfect time to get back into things like fingerless mitts because we are coming up on fall and then winter and the holiday season will be here before we know it. Those make great quick gift knits. So if you're looking for something like that, head over and check out the pattern. Okay, finished objects. I finished my August socks, my Desert Vista Dye Works socks for her year long knit along. This colorway is donuts. I did an afterthought heel for these. So for the counts for everything else and um, how I did my toe, I followed the Vanilla Socks on DPNs um, by Crazy Sock Lady Designs, one of my patterns. And then the afterthought heel, I have a tutorial here on YouTube for how I do my afterthought heel. So I will have that linked in the project page. There's my afterthought heel. I did it right in the middle on both socks, right in the middle of the turquoise. The blue stripe there. So I'm super pleased with these. I knit them up on US 1, 2.25 millimeter needles, 64 stitches. Very, very happy with how they came out. This was such a fun, oops, such a fun colorway to work with this or last month. It's September now. It was a fun colorway to work with last month. Works in progress. I have two that I'm going to show you and then one that I'm dreaming of that I want to chat about. So the first one I have in my bag from Sandy of By the Lakeside. And I don't know if I had, I have, these are socks. I have one done. I don't know if I had one done. That was probably kind of loud. Um, last episode or not. I don't think that I did. So one of these are done. These are for Eric. And for this, I used Knit Picks Fleechy in the Treehouse colorway. And for the heels, toes, and cuffs, I just used some random yarn. This is the same gray that I used in the Rainbow Connection fingerless mitts. And then this was just some like black tonal that I had. So I was just trying to use up <laughs> some leftover bits of yarn. I've got the second sock going. I am past the heel. And I'm currently working on the gusset decreases. I am using the high high flyers. US 1 2.25 millimeter needles, 
And I've cast on the medium size. I'm following the Vanilla Socks on Magic Loop pattern for these. So I will probably get some work done on these, hopefully this week before this weekend, but this weekend for sure, because Austin has a basketball tournament. I think I'm taking him to his game on Friday. It's one parent allowed, one spectator um, per player right now with every with COVID and everything. So I think I'm taking him on Friday. So I'll have a little bit of knitting time maybe while we wait to get in um, for the game. All right, another Sandy by the Lakeside bag here. And this is holding my Anchors cardigan. This is a pattern by Petite Knit. There isn't, like nothing looks really that different from last week, I guess. But I am done with the ribbing. So there are five sections of ribbing. And I completed that this morning and now I'm ready to start the raglan increases. I'm super happy with how this ribbing section came out. I love this section. It was mindless, easy. You do the buttonholes, which side are they on? As you're working. So there's nothing that you need to go back and attach for that front after you're done. I love that it's incorporated. The yarn I'm using, this is by Miss Babs on her Kira base, which is a heavy fingering, 100% superwash merino, I think, right? Yes, 100% superwash merino in the black watch colorway. And I am very excited and motivated to get this done. I've still been doing my 30 minutes of sweater knitting every day. Oh, I'm using my Licka needles, interchangeable needles. They are driftwood needles. I love these needles. I'm very motivated to get this done. I already have my next sweater project picked out and I'm dying <laughs> to cast it on. I want to cast it on so badly. Um, let me go ahead and show you guys. I have it sitting, the yarn anyways, <laughs> sitting right over here. So let me chat for just a moment about why I am so motivated to get this sweater done, why I'm already dreaming of my next sweater cast on. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this. I know some of you are not on Instagram though, so maybe you have not seen the big announcement yet, but last Wednesday I mentioned that I was super distracted and kind of scatterbrained. So by the point on last Wednesday when I recorded this, Eric knew that he was going to be getting a job offer, but he had not accepted it yet. So that's why I did not want to mention it because I didn't want to, what's the saying? Count my, count my chickens before they hatch. I don't know. I can't remember what the saying is, but I did not want to announce that before it, everything was completely official. Little backstory. So we live in Surprise, Arizona. Our family all lives, we were born and raised from the same area in Parkersburg, West Virginia. We have lived away from home basically our entire adult life, our entire marriage. There was a short span of time where we did move back home after Eric got out of the Air Force, but then when he got on with the company he works for now, since then we have just been on the go moving. We moved here to Arizona two years ago, a little over two years ago, and we really didn't have the itch to move again. Um, the boys didn't want to move again. We were not going to move again. <laughs> and then last summer, um, if you've been following me for a while, you may remember that my mother unexpectedly passed away. So I had to try to 
rush to get home to my sisters, which is hard when you live across the country. You can't just hop in the car and get there. It's a super long drive, not one that I wanted to do by myself. So it was the process of finding a plane ticket and then just the astronomical cost of a plane ticket at the last minute trying to book it. So since then, it has just been on my heart and in the back of my mind that we need to live closer to family. Not even just for when bad things happen, but for when good things happen. Um, but those moments when you're away from your family and things happen and you can't just be there, that is so hard. You can't be there to provide the support for them. Um, I had some health things go on last year that I couldn't, you know, we couldn't have people here to help us out. And so it was, it, it's just so hard to be away from family when things happen. Um, I had mentioned that I, you know, I felt like we needed to be closer to family. The boys didn't want to move, so it was never pressed any more than just me mentioning it. It's like, okay, the boys don't want to move. Um, we're not going to make them move again. We went home in June to visit family. We all did. Eric, the boys, I. We weren't home. It wasn't a very long trip. Um, but after that trip, the boys were like, okay, we want to move. <laughs> and as soon as the boys said that, it was like everything kind of fell into place. Because we all had such a hard time leaving West Virginia after this last trip. We had a hard time saying goodbye to family. It was just super hard this time for some reason. I don't know if it's just the state of the world and the uncertainty of so many things right now. Um, and traveling's a little harder right now. So we all had a super hard time saying goodbye and did not want to come back. <laughs> um, but yeah, as soon as the boys said they wanted to move, it was truly like everything fell into place. The timing could not have worked out better jobs opened up for the company that eric works for um in ohio at wright patterson air force base and then everything has just kind of trickled from there falling into place and he accepted the job last wednesday last wednesday afternoon he officially accepted it so i got to i hadn't told very many people um, my best friend jenny knew my sister cassie none of our um eric's mom knew and maybe i don't know his sister probably knew as well um but i got to make that phone call to my dad and he was so excited my grandma was so excited so it was it was a great day i was super scatterbrained just waiting on him to like officially get that offer and accept it so that was the excitement last week but we are still fine-tuning all the details of our move we don't know exactly what area we will be in, but it's right outside of Dayton, Ohio, is where the base is. So we will be somewhere around that area outside of the city. <laughs> um, we're excited. It's definitely, I've had a lot of people ask how the kids are doing. If they're sad, of course, every move is sad for me, for Eric, for the boys. Um, but the silver lining with this one of being three hours from family definitely helps even that out because it's just slightly less than three hours. We've never been that close and never thought we would be able to be that close to where our family is. I had always said, if something opens up at Wright Patterson, you gotta take it, you gotta take it. And truly the timing of this was amazing. So like I said, we're still fine tuning all the details. Things are slowly starting to fall into place. We have a realtor coming tomorrow to um, meet with us for the first time about selling our house here. We already have a realtor in Dayton that's gonna start sending us houses to look at there. So there's a lot of little things that have to fall into place. Specifically, we have to get dates for when movers can come pack our stuff before we can do anything. So we are just anxiously waiting on the phone call from the moving company to see when they can come pack and load our stuff and and all of that so we're super excited i'm hoping fingers crossed we are settled at least even somewhat settled that we have a house and our stuff is in a house <laughs> before thanksgiving that is my hope i want to have the holidays with family it would be amazing so that is our big exciting news since we are moving to a place where there is actual seasons and it is actually cold in the winter there, 
I'm very excited to knit all of the sweaters, excited for my Anchors cardigan to be done. And I have picked out a sweater that I don't know if I'll have it done by Christmas, but if I can, I would like it to be my Christmas sweater this year because I'll actually be able to wear a sweater at Christmas. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, the sweater that I've picked out, so I was super inspired by Amy of Noble Character Crafts podcast. She is knitting a sweater that she is adding beads to, and I just think it is the most gorgeous thing that I have ever seen. So I was super inspired thinking about that and thinking, I want a beaded sweater. And then I just, we found out we were moving and I was like, I want one for Christmas. I want a Christmas beaded sweater. So I searched on Ravelry and found a pattern that was not available to purchase on Ravelry, but they had the book linked. So I followed that link. I think it took me right to Amazon. I could be wrong about this. Maybe I searched it. I don't remember, but I found it on Amazon. It is Vintage Knits. I have an Amazon link below and I will add this book to that link that you can follow for Amazon. So it's Vintage Knits by Sarah Dallas. And the pattern, there are a couple in here that I think I would really like to do, but the pattern that I'm thinking of for a Christmas sweater, it just says it's called beaded sweater. And I already have the yarn picked out. I purchased this yarn. It is Miss Babs, a Katahdin, which is just this massive, huge thing of yarn. And it is in the Catherine colorway. This is a fingering weight yarn, 100% superwash blue faced Lester wool, 1,750 yards. So there's a ton in here. So I'm thinking this is the yarn I'll use. I definitely, it doesn't, sh uh, that's one thing I wish this showed of this sweater. It doesn't show the length. It is not a super cropped, but it is a slightly cropped sweater. So I want to lengthen the body of the sweater and I want sleeves that come down like right there. So I'm also thinking pearl beads. So I just need to get those. And I want to go ahead and get this wound up and have the beads, everything ready so that if things start happening with the move, this can be one of my moving projects that I can work on. So that's kind of some dream knitting here that I need to get on and order the beads. I think I can probably order them Amazon, maybe? I don't know. I need to do some research and see where I can order those beads at and see if I can find them. The ones that I have in my brain that I want. All right. Mail. I have a couple things I got in the mail. So this package was sent for the prize. This is from Island Fiber Dyes and she sent over some progress keeper sets and a skein of yarn. So the skein of yarn is the colorway is mermaid. Here's her logo. And this is a beautiful blue and purple. I love this colorway. So this is her mermaid colorway on her 7525 wool nylon base. And then she sent over a couple of progress keeper sets. They are on these nice, they're almost like on, um, you could use them as a bracelet. <laughs> they're on these rings. They're very, like nautical island themed, super fun. There's two of them, a silver one, and then there is a gold one. And you could totally wear this as a bracelet. Get that one untwisted there. These are super fun. So this will be an upcoming prize. Then I also may have ordered some yarn. I could not resist and you will see why in a moment. Let me get this back in its 
packaging here. Okay. So, my friend Natalie of Blush Yarns had a shop update with her fall colorways. I could not resist. Here are the three that I ordered. Now, could you resist those? I could not resist. <laughs> they are so fall and so perfect. This first one is called All the Harvest. This is on her 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Base. Oh, I love this color right here. Next one is called Autumn is My Favorite Time of Year on her 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon Base. Oh, and they all have cute little progress keepers on them, which is always such a fun little touch. What was this one? And then the third one I ordered is called Falling Leaves on her 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon Base. Now she sent two for a giveaway. So she sent one of the All of the Harvest and one of the Autumn is My Favorite Time of the Year. So these two will be for a giveaway. So I'm thinking, let's do a giveaway for autumn is my favorite time of the year for this episode. What should your prompt be? Either tell me, I'll give you two options because I want some help too. <laughs> so tell me what you would make with this. It is 100 grams, 8515, superwash merino nylon. Obviously great for socks. So if that's what you would make, just tell me socks. If you're using socks and you're gonna use a pattern, what pattern would you use? Like just what would you, you use this for? The other thing that you could answer, so you can tell me what you would make with this or tell me which one of these three I should knit socks with first because I can't decide. So we have Falling Leaves, All the Harvest, and Autumn is my favorite time of year. So one, two, or three. Which one should I knit socks with first because I'm aching to cake one of these up and start a pair of socks but I don't know which one, one, two, or three. So those are the two things you can choose to answer either one that you wish in the comments down below this video and that will enter you to win um, that skein of autumn is my favorite time of year, right? Yes. <laughs> And I will draw a winner before I record the next episode and announce it on the next episode. All right, I think that was it for today. I've shared the big news. Uh, we had a basketball tournament this past weekend, which was super fun. I did do a weekend vlog. I've really been enjoying doing the weekend vlogs um, instead of just the day in the life right now. The day in the life were fun, but the weekend ones are super fun as well. So I, this is the first time that I really included a chunk of like basketball from the weekend. So you get to see a little bit of that, what a tournament is like for us. Um, so yeah, that, that went up on Monday. So you can check that out if you want. And then Austin does have, like I said, a basketball tournament this weekend. I'll be taking him Friday. Eric will take him Saturday. We'll see if he has any games on Sunday. Not sure how the weekend will go, but we're just gonna let him continue playing basketball right up until we have to get on that plane to go just letting him enjoy it here. Um, and then we've already started hunting for a new club for him to join in Ohio. So we're already looking at different options there. 
why it's super excited about the movie because there is a great museum there with the Air Force Base. Um, he can't wait to go check out all of the airplanes and see that museum is supposed to be really cool. I think that wraps it up for today. So thank you guys so much for joining me for this week's episode. I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you guys again soon. Until then, happy knitting. Bye.